good morning to everyone who's joined in and thank you so much for uh, out to us so we have dr reema shah she has been practicing the life coach for over 20 years of experience today along with the qualified therapist on mental illness and globally around dr reema and her team help their clients to find permanent solutions for issues regarding relation problems parenting issues mental abuse work life balance and even clinical problems like depression anxiety stress or even personal issues especially in today's covid world her services have been extremely sought after guys i'm happy and very thankful to have her with us today and she can be reached on her website www.reemashad.net welcome dr reema on our show how are you today? Hi, Ashley. Uh, I'm nervous as always when uh, there's a big talk, but I guess anxiety is normal, yeah. which is what we are going to talk about today, anyways. I want to um, thank Arti. Arti, I really want to thank you for taking this initiative to speak about mental health. Um, you are a very well-known fitness beauty influencer, fashion influencer, and it's. very nice that you've gotten into this space because it's a much needed space you know true and uh, some people talks about uh, external beauty external stuff but um, uh you people take the initiative to speak about how we can keep ourselves healthy mentally yes so i think uh, without Maybe further ado then and something that they don't see inside themselves which is cropping up sure so uh, thank you for the glowing introduction when i hear that from you i i feel you're speaking about somebody else but uh, anyway my pleasure so let's start away straight into uh i think it's a, it's a good time for us to begin yes so i'll be take it away i will allow you to lead me with the questions and i'll answer accordingly hmm not commonly spoken about anxiety and so many people don't even know that they have it so what are the symptoms of anxiety and how do we know we are we have anxiety or we are going through something like this okay so um that's a, a six right out there i think you're just hitting it out of the field with the first question um you know it will be very easy for me to get into clinical jargon because that's what we talk every day but let me keep it simple yes sir uh, anxiety is a very a simple word uh, even common people would be able to relate yes yes absolutely yeah so um, first of all anxiety is a very naturally occurring by product of living it's yeah. one of the naturally occurring states internally and to explain it in a very simplistic manner um anxiety basically is when internally you feel out of control you feel disequilibrium mm-hmm. you don't feel like yourself you know you just feel that something's amiss something's wrong so it's a very very macro a very broad but a very you know common sensical way to understand anxiety um is- to relate with the losing focus or okay so let me do one thing let me just speak about this for a bit sure. and uh, then maybe you can step in with another question sure so what i'm going to do is i will uh, give i will take you through some of the common symptoms that we can look for in ourselves and in the people around us Okay. Whether we talk about our loved ones, our children, our employees, you know, look for these symptoms. These are not exhaustive symptoms. I'm just giving you a few of them, and of course, this is in no way um, a medical diagnosis. Okay. You know, this is just a general talk. So, okay. to to diagnose yourself as having an anxiety disorder, yeah. you will need to go to a medical professional. But for those of us um lay people day to day am i suffering from anxiety what can i do about it this mm-hmm. is towards that direction all right so 
first of all we should know that you know anxiety can cause opposing reactions in people mm-hmm. sometimes because of anxiety many of us become more restless right. we become more panicky and we become hyper yes and for others of us anxiety can actually make us slower right. it can make us more immobile okay so these are the two spectrums or these are the two ends of the spectrum of anxiety mm-hmm. and uh, having said that i'll just take you through a few of the symptoms that you can look for okay now again i want to make a disclaimer here that look we are all an urban population True. we are all busy by choice right all of us are living helter skelter lives okay we are up from morning till night so we right. all have balance, right like our people in in your field there are good hair days and bad hair days i myself particularly am suffering from a bad hair day today but uh, anyway so there are good days and there are bad days we are not referring to those one off days right. where we are all feeling low or burnt out or overwhelmed right. what we looking at is consistently right if i notice consistently the following symptoms Right. in my cell in the people around me then it could possibly be a sign of anxiety okay mm-hmm. so if you feel nervous tense okay. fearful all the time okay if you feel restless all the time okay in many severe cases people do also get panic attacks because of the restlessness and the overwhelm so if you are somebody who is getting panic attacks okay. time and again that could be a sign that you are suffering from an anxiety disorder oh, okay yeah again i'm going to make a distinction here today right. what we are here to talk about is simple mm-hmm. anxiety okay simple anxiety is what you and me go through every day mm-hmm. an anxiety disorder is when that simple anxiety becomes unmanageable when it crosses limits you know it's like saying that um, i have an upset stomach mildly upset versus having severe diarrhea right if you get my point yeah so an anxiety disorder would require medical intervention mm-hmm. whereas simple anxiety is something that we can educate ourselves about and we can learn how to manage that which oh. is the focus of today's talk right. okay coming back to the symptoms Right. if you consistently have palpitations or a rapid heart rate mm. okay if you consistently have shallow breathing so notice your breathing people how are you breathing every day do you breathe shallow or are you able to breathe deeply something un- like a shallow breathing we don't even notice in the daily uh, life and True. running the cycle true um unexplained sweating i mean obviously if i'm sitting in a 50 degree celsius environment i am going to sweat right but unexplained sweating is also a sign of anxiety oh wow um yes yes people who sweat a lot without a reason mm. so you know sometimes there's a medical underlying cause right and that's not what we are talking about we are speaking about unexplained sweating that could be a sign of anxiety mm. um chronic fatigue if okay. you're feeling tired all the time you know again one of days we all feel tired like i'm sure i'm going to feel extremely tired after this talk and i'm certainly going to take a break before my consultations in the evening right so not not that chronic fatigue when you wake up every day you're tired and you don't feel like facing the world you just want to go back to bed or there's nothing for you to look forward to that could be a sign that you may be suffering from yeah anxiety right um irritability mm-hmm. so yeah irritability and i hope i'll see later you will ask me a little more about anger and irritability because it is something that i do want to talk about Sure. especially in relation to women it's very important a uh, very very famous symptom rt something that you mentioned right in the beginning we are right back to it difficulty concentrating mm. brain fog mind going blank 
Mm. I'm uh, taking the liberty to use a lot of Google terms because all of us Google, you know. So brain fog is a very Googled term. When you Google concentration yeah. difficulties, the first word you get is brain fog. Right? So much after COVID, also people are facing a, a brain fog issue. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, sleep difficulties. Mm-hmm. Again, I. hope you will ask me something about this this is another favorite topic of mine yes difficulty falling asleep difficulty mm-hmm. maintaining sleep throughout the night and you yes. know difficulty waking up this issue do in uh, nowadays like sleep issue is quite common and like i see so many people facing uh, or of problems falling asleep um consistent nausea okay sometimes when a lot of cases present to us and we think it's um, you know hyperacidity or whatever it right. may not be it may actually be a sign of anxiety okay. so another word very googled word and people are talking a lot about it aarti i'm sure you are also talking about it gut health yes how is your just went through a gut health program so i can totally relate when Correct. like our second brain so if you have uh, don't have a good gut you may face all the symptoms that you are talking about okay um eating disorders so, uh eating disorders is again another sign that uh, there may be mm-hmm. some uh, anxiety if you feel like eating too much or too little that could be a sign that you're anxious mm mm-hmm. Okay. You can definitely keep your questions pouring in. We'll pick yes. questions at the end of the session, and uh, you are most welcome with your suggestions and questions. Um, just to bring the so I can see that people are still joining. Right. So just to bring everybody up to speed, we are still on the first question itself. Uh, we are discussing the symptoms of anxiety. so we are still there um again arthi another uh, very uh, common symptom of anxiety that many people don't know about right. is if you feel too hot or too cold okay. again unexplained now obviously if i'm in iceland i am going to feel cold right and if i am in the sahara desert i am going to feel hot but right. unexplained hot and cold without a reason Mm-hmm. could also be a sign of anxiety uh, another very famous one chest pain again related to the palpitation mm-hmm. um about 4 years ago i had the case of a 22 year old girl who was referred to me by a cardiologist okay this girl had persistent chest pain all okay. her medical records were clear oh. and lo and behold it turned out to be chronic anxiety okay um muscle tension your body feeling tense tired all the time where you feel like you just need to take a massage mm-hmm. so that is another sign of anxiety impaired immune function people who keep falling ill very often okay could be a sign of an untreated underlying anxiety mm-hmm. uh unexplained weight gain <laughs> okay. i think the people who are struggling with weight or who feel that they put on weight please do look into the fact that you may be having some anxiety that you're not dealing with mm-hmm. um the last couple of symptoms i'll take you through before we end this and you can move on with your next question okay uh, any kind of addiction if you have any kind of addiction be it drugs be it caffeine be it nicotine uh be it um, you know television gadgets Mm. be it sleeping sleeping can also be an addiction okay right? anything that you do in excess anything that you are addicted to could okay. also be the signs of an underlying anxiety so okay. please do look into that for yourself for the people you love mm. for your employees uh i know for a fact that there are a lot of parents listening to us today there are a lot of guardians there are teachers school counselors listening to us today so this is going to be informative for them in terms of uh, you know what to do 
and of course so uh, arti again i hope you will talk to me about children yes. very important segment of our society that so is so i'm hoping for all that to come yes. last but not least another yes. symptom of anxiety could be any kind of trauma okay if you've lost somebody in the recent past if you're going through any kind of grief mm-hmm. then that could also be a sign of anxiety so wow. that was just a list uh, at least on so my side i learn... i may miss out a few symptoms but i think more or less i've covered everything so yes. while you um, ask me the next question i will take a breather and ensure my anxiety doesn't get manageable we <laughs> will have my favorite tea i mean it's don't you know me know that i love my tea and so so these common common symptoms which we think is just okay is actually not okay something unusual and something that is out of way which is getting an addiction which we are not aware about can be actually anxiety and people might not even know about it and they might not even be comfortable to discuss this so going on to the next question is our self esteem related to our anxiety oh nice one arti nice one the answer is yes yes and yes okay. so for the uninitiated uh, let's again speak very simplistically as to what is self esteem very simply put self esteem is how much i value my own self internally right, right. do i feel valuable do i feel precious do mm-hmm. i feel that i matter do i feel that i make a difference you know that is self esteem not if others think i'm important that's a separate discussion we ain't going there right but i value myself that is important mm-hmm. so that self esteem and um, you know um i will speak to you a little bit about what to do because anxiety is related to self esteem right. and since this book is also about uh, solutions you know so trying to give you as many solutions as i can in the brief talk of today yes um but before i go to the solutions i would like to mention about some um, famous you know some celebrities okay. people that we know who okay. have admitted publicly to suffering from self esteem issues okay. just so that we are normalizing this concept mm-hmm. um the ageless marilyn monroe oh right yeah yes she did admit and of course even in hindsight analysis the historians and the researchers said that she was suffering from self esteem issues mm-hmm. uh the singer mariah carey a lot of us have grown up on her music yes a uh, beautiful voice she has admitted that she has self esteem issues mm-hmm. um this one is a little unbelievable but very very true the tennis champ serena williams really? doesn't show in her game doesn't no. show in her body language she's a strong proud Very woman confident to yes that's that's what i said unbelievable but she has admitted to having self esteem issues the reason i'm mentioning all these things is uh, for people to understand that self esteem issues not having enough self esteem is much more common than what we realize okay and it's directly related to anxiety oh okay right just joining the dots for you just joining the dots when yeah. i wake up in the morning and i ask myself yeah am i making a difference you know like you know am i really good enough do people need me i'm Then sure i know that must be asking that else when they wake up and like every morning and you know they have to motivate themselves to go on so i'm sure so many will be in such a question mark okay uh, i have a few more names in my list but i think let's quickly skip to the solutions uh, we've spoken okay. about enough in the full women right uh, the habits that we can inculcate in our lifestyle mm-hmm. to improve our self esteem mm-hmm. is do something that makes you feel good yes that's so very important uh i've seen that as in a few of your videos where you do advocate about 
you know doing what you like to I do so when you report are and happy if you are in feeling good you cannot spread that love and happiness around you correct um having fun feeling good is an emotional or a psychological need and um, it's important to find something to do that makes you feel good right yes. um many of us who are caregivers we are so busy in taking care of others that we forget what is it that But, inspires us yes so um use this talk as a time for you to and i uh, okay so this is something i should have mentioned in the beginning i actually mention it in all my consultations okay the people who are listening to us all you folks i hope you have something to note down something to write down because we will be giving a lot of solutions in today's talk so if you don't have something to note down quickly go and get it go grab pen paper quick one yeah. or what have you i mean some some well, people prefer soft copy and that's so okay a lot of information um, that uh, we have not come across to actually make a list of things that make you feel good you know list it down yes because one of the things that makes me feel good is sometimes binge watching my favorite episodes i will admit it on camera sure <laughs> what <laughs> down in a journal like gratitude journal yeah yeah uh, we will come to all that i right. think yes uh, let me just work with the self esteem right now true um exercise 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 any form any kind but exercise is something that will that has a direct correlation with your self esteem when you exercise you are giving your brain the message that i can do this yes right i can climb 500 stairs or i can run 2 kilometers or i can swim 10 rounds mm. or i can walk 50 steps mm. not everybody needs to be an athlete but mm. exercise 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 and i'm warning all of you you're going to hear me mention exercise a lot during this uh, talk today because to tell you very honestly Mm -hmm. exercise is nature's natural antidepressant for us true if you go back to the days of the caveman when human beings first you know came into being mm. we used to run and walk everywhere right. and that's how our brain is designed our brain and body is designed to produce antidepressant chemicals when we move right okay okay uh some more uh, tips on boosting your self esteem mm -hmm. um one of the things i advise my clients is make a resume of the things that you are good at wow why That's... should only the corporate people have all the fun we can also make resumes so again use this talk to actually take these things forward i promise you they will help you make a resume about everything that you're good at okay. i'm good at choosing you know like maybe artie can put in her resume i'm good at choosing my lipstick colors <laughs> and my daughter now gets involved and like mama i will choose it for you you know that gets really interesting as well a very nice very nice the next um uh next um, suggestion for boosting your self esteem is artie again you are one step ahead of me is keeping a gratitude journal <laughs> I, i i don't know why you're getting the answer strong man <laughs> i'm trying my best but uh, at times yeah okay. i can, i do tend to skip it too but in my mind i do it if i don't get the time to write it in my mind is like the first thing in the morning when i wake up i do that i need i'll give you more that i wake up that's it. It's, it's you know excellent that you're doing it i'll give you the science behind this the design of the human brain is such that it very rarely can hold two opposing thoughts simultaneously so if you are in gratitude okay likely that you will not be in anger or in hatred or in disappointment it's right. likely yes you know? 
um another very good self esteem booster is spending time with the people who make you happy that makes sense too we spend make with the people who make you happy yes right in this virtual reality world where we can connect through screens right. if you make it a point to spend time personally with the people you love it's a great self esteem booster yeah. um another thing is um, volunteering mm-hmm. doing something you know charitable or volunteering not every time doing something for a gain Something Let's do- not have an agenda about everything in life. So, you right. know, Arti, you taking this initiative of mental health, that is what you're volunteering for, and it's a great initiative, and I'm sure That's it must be boosting your self-esteem. That's one way of giving back to the society and the community. Absolutely, absolutely. Very, very important, the next point. Sometimes we forget, mm-hmm. but then... you have reema to remind you you are human tum insaan ho for the indian population and for the others you're human and as the brits would say you are bloody human so i i have some clients listening from the uk as well it's very early for them but uh, diligent chaps listening into it be human forgive yourself you are going to make mistakes the more you criticize yourself the lower your self esteem is going to be and the higher your anxiety is going to be again joining the dots there is no failure you know you always learn so much from mistakes or like that it will polish you absolutely or oh, celebrate your accomplishments even if they are smaller ones when we are children we have parents who do that for us but when we grow up and become adults sometimes we lose the uh, you know we lose this habit right so just like your attitude journal and your self achievement uh, resume your skills resume also put it in your calendar once in a while to celebrate yourself again very important for those of us who are um who always put others first celebrate yourself okay another great way to boost your self esteem is challenging your inner voice if you have an inner voice that's telling you you're not good enough mm-hmm. tell that inner mm-hmm. voice let's see <laughs> okay um being compassionate with yourself with others the quality of compassion mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. uh, a lot of religions preach that and there's a reason they preach it so be compassionate in this mercenary world many times we lose sight of compassion okay um again this is something that will be said many times in today's talk stay in the present try not to worry too much about what has happened in the past or too much about what's going to happen in the future mm-hmm. try to stay as much in the present as you can will i ever be the best athlete too much in the future yeah. stay in the present will i ever be the best radio jockey or disc jockey or whatever i'm just taking some examples at the top of my head mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. surprising but not so surprising point in boosting your self esteem and um, this is as much for adults as it is for children so when you're making a note of this please note whatever you can apply to yourself as an adult okay. most of it can also apply with the child population most of it there are some things you can't but most of it forgive yourself forgive yourself another exercise i can suggest that everybody do is end of the week pen and paper instead of netflix write down things that you're angry about with yourself others and just let it go man um another few google points so we've actually added a section called the google section because like i said google is our best friend now mm. accept compliments genuinely most of us take compliments here not in our heart so we take it here and we say ah, some hidden agenda that person must be having for telling me that i'm good 
just as common genuinely in your heart it will help you to boost your self esteem okay mm-hmm. uh yeah reach out and seek support give yourself a break love yourself unconditionally like i said google items but i've included them because sometimes we get comments you know saying that these are also the points so i said let me include a google section one of the questions we get very often is how is anxiety so what i'm also doing now is as the questions are coming in i can read them yeah. i will just take some of them okay um how is anxiety different for women as compared to men first of okay. all is it different So the answer is yes it is different mm-hmm. anatomically mm-hmm. our brains are built differently there is a part in our brain which is actually called the worry center okay i mean of course it the the medical term for that is uh, you know terribly impressive cingulate gyrus oh. okay but uh, that is uh, in uh, just you know layman's language that is called the worry center that's a part of our brain in women anatomically this worry center is nine times larger in size oh right because women are supposed to be the nurturers the caregivers so worry slash anxiety now i'm going to use these words interchangeably okay. it comes more naturally to women okay so the answer to this question uh, you know somebody asked is yes Oh, one of my favorite questions i can see it's been coming from the beginning can social media be a cause of anxiety now it's quite ironic we are on social media speaking about anxiety i do want to spend some time addressing this question so again those of you who are listening in those of you who are making notes you can start putting your pen to paper so let me first begin by saying that there is good news and there's bad news so let me begin with the bad news the bad news is that never ever again will we be a society who will be able to do without social media that's the bad news social media is here to stay the good news is that we are still in charge as human beings we are still in control so what we're going to do is we are going to go to ways that we can manage our consumption okay um what i would say you should focus on when you're using social media is use social media to educate being in school we didn't have social media we didn't have google we had to go to the libraries use social media to educate yourself which is what arti is doing today okay right. uh, use social media to make new connections Right. Use social media to meet new friends. Lots of benefits of social media. However, now let's come to what works against us in the consumption of social media. What increases our anxiety? Mm-hmm. One is the mindless scrolling. You know the reels. Arti, I know you make reels, but <laughs> no. the reels. Okay. mindless scrolling as you know what means scroll scrolling is good magic now you see her now you don't okay how many people think i'm the shot up people not the anxiety okay are we getting to with your anxiety shoot up yes i would admit yes i was like it was going fine why did this happen <laughs> there you go this is a real life example of how anxiety plays around in our body at every minute so i right. think take a breath relax you're fine okay. now this is all fine and even if the network does hiccups. drop remember no. we can always okay. reconnect yes hiccups do come in always reconnect. yeah so i'm uh, now coming to uh, what increases our anxiety because of social media what are the things that we do because mm-hmm. of which anxiety increases in the consumption of social media right. uh, i'll repeat one was mindless scrolling right. second is uh, the addiction to validation let me put it like that very simply yeah. we are addicted to how many thumbs up how many likes how many followers 
How many right? Steps? So addiction to validation. Easy to remember. What I would say is being addicted to validation is not bad. It's a need. It's an emotional need for us to feel validated. But instead right. of being addicted to social media validation, mm -hmm. look for that validation amongst your close circle, people whom you trust, people who matter to you. Look for it within yourself. Right. Self-esteem. Look for it within yourself. Okay. Mm. The second reason why we get addicted to social media is what we famously in our circles like to call the dopamine hit. D O P A M I N E. Dopamine is a chemical. It's an ecstasy chemical in the brain. Okay, so dopamine is the chemical that gives you the high, right. and that's right. the design behind every social media technology. It is mm. designed to keep giving you those hits so that you get addicted. You know, that's the reason children are not able to leave the screens. Right. Because every time they touch the screen. It's like Alibaba's cave of treasures opens for them. You know, so something what, new, something exciting is coming on the screen. Yes, they don't want to leave it, and they don't want to come out of it. Correct. So the dopamine hit uh, again. Try getting your dopamine, your daily dose of dopamine through exercise and through achievement. Do things, small things every day, which matter. Mm -hmm. You know, achieve something. That is a good substitute for a dopamine hit. Okay. One of the things I tell my clients is, if you're ever confused about what to do and how to behave, mm -hmm. take your mind back to the days of the caveman, our ancestors, yeah. from where we came. They didn't have social media, so how did they get their dopamine hit? By running, by hunting, by sitting around the fire and talking to each other. These are all the things I've said so far. Connect with the people yeah. you love, exercise, achievements, right? So just go back to the days of the caveman. Something that go I did. Absolutely, go simple. If you look at the latest diets, you know the naturopaths and others. What they're advising: eat what your ancestors ate. Too yes. much processed food, you know. But uh, actually, I'm being lucky for you and me. Our ancestors, like Cleopatra and others, did use lipstick, so we won't have to get off the lipsticks. We are safe. Thankfully. Okay. I can live, um, but not a concealer. You know, like <laughs> concealer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you the analogy uh, for a dopamine hit. This will help you to understand how children's brain function. Dopamine mm. is like having a chocolate. You know the way children crave chocolate. That's the way that their brain craves dopamine, which is why it's difficult for them to get off the screen. Mm. Um, so much information that I'm learning from. Wow, that is like so helpful, and I'm sure it is must be so much information for everyone to absorb here as well. I hope you're. Down joining as they're writing in with their questions. Perhaps we could request a few of the more compassionate audience to also write in about whether the talk has been helpful so far for them or not. No yes, trolls, please. Really, get <laughs> all the feedback. And uh, if you have any suggestions, also do keep pouring in. And your question answers you can put down in the question mark that you're seeing below in the live session. Hi, Biral. Biral has joined. Thank you, Biral. Okay, uh, another very famous Googleable concept: FOMO, fear mm. of missing out. That the, is so the, common. One, yes, one of the reasons that social media is bad for us is because um, we, you know, when we look at the curated images, perfect mm. family. Perfect holidays, perfect figures, so people going to restaurants, you know, friends going out together, clicking snaps. Um, we feel we are missing out on something, you know. We are missing out on something good, someone good, somewhere good. So let me give you an example. I live uh, very close to the waterfront. So okay. the other day, 
was this group of four boys and uh, they got beers lucky for them the police was not patrolling at that time mm-hmm. they got four beers and three guys were very eager to have the beers you know they were very eager to start drinking but one of them said wait and he adjusted the beers and then he started photographing the beers oh. and i was standing there and watching and he must have photographed it for at least 5 minutes and those friends behind him are screaming are jaldi karo humko peena hai so this is the real life and after that also i watched them out of my curiosity they were just sitting in silence and drinking the beer but the person who sees this photograph on the social media will see wow for friends having beer i'm missing out man and that's fomo for you by the way that is fomo for you it's a very real ache in your heart i'm missing out most of it is not true guys yeah. most of it is not true so much is edited that this word um, that uh, people don't know the real picture and uh, yes talking about fomo there are like a long holidays coming up after this friday so please please don't have this fomo hmm uh there was one question that had come in right at the beginning from uh, nikhil i find it hard to sleep okay so very very related to social media mm-hmm. it plays around with your sleep cycles Right. let me take some time and uh, you know explain to you about the sleep um there is a chemical in our brain called and, melatonin uh, maybe this is much relatable with the question that i want to ask why can't i turn off my mind at night ah nice i think why can't i turn my mind off at night yes so um let's do one thing let me answer your question a little more in depth arthi yes. but so that the viewers and the listeners don't lose the connect let right. me first complete the social media thing and then we'll come to the sleep thing okay right. uh, another form i want all of you to be aware of is something that is being diagnosed by doctors now it's mm-hmm. called social media fatigue it's a diagnosable concept sooner or later we will be adding it to our journal of diagnosis that is all in process but we are being presented with cases of children and adolescents and even adults who are actually going through social media fatigue mm. i'll explain to you how this happens um too much of virtual reality too much of screen and not enough irl in real life Okay. very simple too much of screen too much of connecting with my friends on screen not enough meeting my friends in person too much of watching pictures on screen and too little of me going out there and actually experiencing life that must so be social media influencer also uh, you'll have to introspect arthi and find out for yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how how true that is for you Yeah. but please understand that too much of usage of social media does cause fatigue to the brain right. again caveman ancestors human brain is not designed for so much of virtual reality not as yet given another 50 years 100 years when the brain evolves and the design of the brain changes which by the way it is you know but at least for another 50 years safely i can say that the the current edition of the brain is not designed for too much of virtual reality okay so switch yeah, off that, your gadget and get when, out there that's when i quite often go for social media detox or social media breaks and uh, stay away from my much needed uh, instagram where i am more active and uh, that detox is really helpful and needed it gets me so refreshed rejuvenated and can come i can come back much stronger over here right um arthi my um, my helper here is telling me that uh, we've spent almost i think 40 minutes on this talk right right so uh, let me hear from the audience whether you guys are okay to go on there is a lot of uh, you know material that we can talk about today so let me 
see a few comments coming in about whether we could go on for another 20 minutes or 30 minutes please do let us know we don't want you to have social media fatigue not especially since we are talking about it question uh monish maybe you can tell us okay so aarti is saying absolutely that's my sister she's saying absolutely and uh kim yes. from dubai is saying very helpful she said uh, please help okay, me kim is saying please continue sadhna aunty saying go on okay so three women Wait. have voted sorry none of the men joined in monish you were too late three women have voted we are going to go on okay gadget right. addiction and social media again very concerning topic 90% of the children that we work with the adults also that we work with have some amount of gadget addiction um i don't want to get too much into this because we've already spoken a lot about it the dopamine hit and you know the um uh what rp said about the gadget detox mm -hmm. what i do want to talk about is um i just look i've been saying a lot of bad things about social media so before i end this segment <laughs> i want to give a shout out to social media it kept us sane and alive during the pandemic so dear social media uh you know even though we complain about you and we bitch about you we are thankful to you that you kept us connected alive feeling safe during the um uh, social media thank you tanuja uh, thank you for that comment okay now uh something from your side arti you want to ask me something yes um how main like you know there is a little confusion we heard symptoms from you but can you say you get angry if you are anxious i think we ah. spoke about it yes yes um you know i had said sometime back during the gratitude journal mm -hmm. that uh, it's a bit difficult for the brain to hold to opposing emotions together so if you are in gratitude you will not be in anger however the question is if i'm angry if i'm getting irritated often if i'm having anger outbursts often could i actually be anxious at the base of it and the answer is yes okay. unfortunately for us the chemicals that make us anxious are the same chemicals that make us angry only the intensities are different so when i'm anxious maybe the chemicals are at unit 3 and as the units keep rising as it becomes unit 4 5 6 that anxiety can very often be converted into anger okay so especially for uh, those of us who worry a lot who get mm -hmm. overwhelmed we find that if we don't manage our worry or our overwhelm after some time we have an explosive outburst right you can see the same thing with children right right when you see children throwing tantrums when you see them getting angry dear parents dear guardians dear teachers school counselors please consider there may be an underlying anxiety issue you know there is an entire section that we have on children i don't know how much time people are going to hear us for but please do consider there is an anxiety which could be triggering the anger okay so that's all i would say for now on this one and i think this is a good time now to complete that question about the sleep why can't i turn my mind off at night again i'll give you an analogy to explain it to you think of your brain as a car okay right. the car has got an engine so the engine is going fast that is one part of your brain or your mind called the parasympathetic nervous system okay. the parasympathetic nervous system that's the engine of your brain which gives you energy motivation drive so you get energized mm. may sometimes become a little hyper that right. is one part of your brain it it gives you fuel to mm. to get up and do things 
there is another component to your brain just like the car has got an engine but it's also got a brake yes when of the brake to slow you down you may be in fifth gear you may be in cruise control i don't know much about the new cars i don't know if there is a sixth gear or not but you may be driving at brake neck speed i've come back from office and i have to cook i have to put the children to bed i have to finish my own homework i have to do something else i'm going at brake neck speed mm fortunately for us the way our brains are designed there is another component the brake the oh i'm so sorry i have made a mistake you will have to excuse me what i said earlier the parasympathetic nervous system sorry that's the brake what i meant to refer to earlier in terms of the engine is the sympathetic nervous system okay. um genuinely no, please please do forgive me so i'll repeat that for you the engine is the sympathetic nervous system listen this is all clinical jargon you don't need right. to know it forget about it engine and brake let's just stick to that engine drives you brake slows you down if you know, your parasympathetic and- nervous system or your brake is not activated and not working well you may go to bed at a decent hour okay so maybe mm-hmm. i'm going to bed at 10 okay but i'm not getting sleep till 1 till 1 am i was staring at the ceiling thinking what it thoughts tossing and turning then i decide to eat something then i decide to go to social media but it's exhausting when i'm mm-hmm. going to bed but i can't turn off my mind um another piece of uh, scientific information i want to give you here is about how the brain is also designed to help us to sleep okay, okay? there's a chemical called melatonin in the brain again in the recent years melatonin is an over the counter available drug melatonin is a naturally occurring chemical in your brain which makes you sleep mm. now just like with everything else in life god decided to have fun he said i'll give you melatonin right but it's not going to be readily available to you three times in the night when melatonin naturally occurs in your brain mm-hmm. 8:30 pm which is why bedtime for children is suggested at around that time you know 8:39 that's a surge of melatonin naturally produced by the brain Oh, so wow. put to bed at that time second round of naturally occurring melatonin 10:30 pm at night so i think 10 o'clock yes. is a good time to get into bed so that you can catch that 10:30 flight and fly off into la la land now oh, unfortunately I, this... the next round comes only at around 2 2 am so oh, after that... 10:30 pm there's no melatonin being produced naturally the next one comes only at 2 am so those of you who are concerned about their sleep please analyze as i'm saying do you find yourself not being able to sleep before 1 or 2 am now you know the reason why and now you know what to do get into bed catch the 10:30 flight you you will be in a better place yeah so much um to practice and not heard out that is really wonderful piece of information and i'm sure not many must be aware of it i'm glad that this talk is helpful i'm going to give you some more tips on how to maintain and manage sleep it's important yes uh let's again keep it simple let us um, use uh, my uh, mother is here my mother is listening into me hi mom Um, so mantra okay the mantra is turn it all off yes turn Even... it all off dim the lights after 7:30 8 pm dim the lights remember yes. ancestors give yes. man no lights only fire right circadian cycles of the brain the brain is designed to function with light when the sun goes down we are ready to sleep dim the lights after 7 pm dim the noises you know the tv the music turn it all off surrender your gadgets surrender your gadgets keep a gadget monitor at home this is you know what i tell my parents 
Mm. One person every week gets to be the gadget monitor. At mm. a predetermined time, the gadget monitor goes around collecting everybody's gadgets, We and then they do. lock them. Oh. <laughs> then you lock up the gadget. Okay. Right. So turn it all off. Turn it all off. Give the melatonin a chance. Um, you can try all your Googleable items again. Try deep breathing, your chamomile, herbal teas, blah blah blah. Um, try all that. Um, what I also want to say is that, like I said, anxiety is something that comes up when the sun goes down. Design of the brain: you become more anxious as your activity slows down. During the day, too many things to do. You're occupied at night. Nothing to do. Sitting around the fire, anxieties come up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I mentioned right in the beginning, I'm repeating it for those of the uh, listeners who have joined late. Um, anxiety can either make you more hyper or it can make you more passive, more complacent. All right. So, for many of us, the deep breathing. And the yoga nidras may not help, and I'm one of those people. I cannot deep breathe and meditate for the life of me. I've tried and tried. Oh, I just can't do. It. I can't meditate more than fifteen minutes. Absolutely. So we are those who are in that hyper range. But what does work for me is some evening exercise. Okay, mm. some vigorous exercise in the evening really mm. gives me a better night's sleep. Okay, I've seen this. The evenings when I am working with um, USA and I am consulting till late, mm -hmm. those are the evenings when I find it difficult to sleep, and my sleep is also a little, you know, wired. But mm. those evenings when I do not consult with USA and I am working, I mean, I'm exercising, mm. I sleep really well. So today I had this talk. I ensured yesterday I had a rigorous exercise, and I'm telling you, I slept like a baby. That A wonderful thing to do, actually. After a when you guys try, it. amazing sleep and even hot shower also helps. Because, I think, do you know my content? <laughs> Have you peeked into my notes, you naughty girl? Yes, warm water therapy was the next one. <laughs> I wonder whether one of my assistants has secretly submitted my content to you. Anyway. Listen, I'm just joking. Okay, just making it a little light. Journaling really helps. Journaling. Write down at night what you want to do the next day. Basically, make your mind light. Put whatever you want in the journal. If you're angry, remove your anger in the journal. If you're grateful, write some gratitude. If you have a to-do list for the next day, make the to-do list so that you're not waking up at all hours of the night thinking. Mm -hmm. So basically, close your day. Very right. important. Close your day. You know. Um, I take you back to the caveman to sitting around the fire. What would they do when they would sit around the fire? Think of the tribals. Sometimes they would dance. That's your rigorous exercise in the evening. Sometimes they would tell stories. You know, they would exchange information. So when you surrender your gadgets to the gadget monitor. Sit and talk with your family. You know that's a great way to unburden the mind and go to sleep. And if there's no family, I I always say there's no shame in talking to yourself. Look in the mirror, right. talk to yourself. That's not considered insane, mm. right? If you look at the psychiatric criteria for schizophrenia, the top criteria is talking to self. But mm. I'm telling you that has changed now in today's world. Where many of us are living separately from our family, you know, we have migrated for work, and we don't have a close circle around us, especially at night. Talk to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Write letters. You know, be with yourself mm. without the gadgets. Um, try to sleep around the same time every night. That helps. Either ten thirty or eight thirty, or then. For those who can't manage one thirty-two, what I would suggest now is I think I've given a lot of uh, information about uh, how to manage sleep, how to manage anxiety. Should we give some attention to the children now? Yes. So, children suffering anxiety. How can we address the needs of the children suffering from anxiety? 
ooh huge content big segment everybody take your tea coffee water take your pen to paper make a note okay i'm aligning you guys take a moment you know everybody take a moment big segment we all have some children or the other in our life mm mm-hmm. um so i first want to uh, talk about how to recognize if your child has anxiety again Believe some of the symptoms you can look for yeah. this is not a substitute for medical diagnosis if you suspect your child has anxiety i would always encourage you to seek a medical opinion i would always encourage you to go to a professional even if mm. it's for nothing but to educate yourself take one mm. appointment you know and i want to use your platform rc to make a very personal appeal this is something that's very close to my heart mm. i i want to appeal to the parents who are listening in please remove the taboo of emotional and mental health from your mind this generation of children requires mental health support please do not hesitate to consult a professional a psychologist a therapist a psychiatrist whoever but please do not deprive your child of the mental health support that they need right you know our 90% of the child cases that come to us uh, i don't know if my friend uh, elasia has joined but elasia if you're listening um you know 90% of the child cases that come to us mm-hmm. when we read the history when we listen to the parents internally we are just shaking our heads in disbelief that okay. poor child could have been spared so much of trouble if only the parents had dropped the mental health taboo and consulted a professional a little early on sometimes it's too late sometimes yes. it's too late you know so it's my personal appeal to parents please remove the mental health taboo mm. my child is not crazy why should i go to a therapist your child is not crazy he's just human and that too he's a little human he's a small person do mm. not feel afraid to approach a professional to guide you you know so anyway having said all that that was my one impassioned speech i'll come back to the content okay so coming to the symptoms um very important please make a note if you find your child having unexplained and frequent anger or aggression okay if you take away your child's uh, favorite toy he is going to be angry that's an explained anger and nowadays right? if you take away the gadget also it happens like this yeah gadget toy is now interchangeable there are no toys there are only gadgets but unexplained anger if you find your child getting angry for no reason getting angry too often the child may be having an underlying anxiety issue the second is um, unexplained or frequent demotivation complacency what the parents like to term as laziness okay so a lot of parents will come and say that my child is very lazy it may not be laziness it may be that your child is demotivated he's uh, just become passive and complacent remember we said in the beginning that uh, anxiety can either cause you to be hyper which is your anger anger is your hyperness and the complacency is anxiety making you a little passive okay if you find your child chronically avoiding situations okay. i don't want to go to school okay. i don't want to go to play i don't want to meet the relatives so if you find that your child is having um you know like an like an avoidance issue coming in chronically look once in a while while avoidance is fine we all want to crawl back into our shell and we just want to hibernate okay then bed wetting if you find that your child is wetting we also get cases of grown up children who bed wet so even after the toilet training is done children who are 5 6 8 sometimes 
um you know two years back i got the case of a 16 year old boy with bed wetting issues that is a sure shot sign of anxiety um a lot of these symptoms are similar to the ones that i said for the adults right in the beginning so right. you will, you will find an overlap okay. like i said what applies to adults most of it does apply to children okay, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, unexplained changes in appetite eating too much or eating too little unexplained if the child is on holiday and he's having a bit more of junk food and all i mean let's That's- let they are allowed to be hitlers and sticklers you know <laughs> right my friend monique uh, always advocates this he'll be very happy to hear this that look boss let's not be sticklers man one day the child ate two extra burgers like big deal man but if he's doing it chronically observe your child hmm. okay so one of the things that i want to say today is the first way in which you can help your child is to start observing your child Okay. many parents do not spend enough time in observing they spend more time in reacting mm for some time just observe your child become a detective being a friend uh, i don't agree with that uh, let us take another parenting series arti then i'll have enough time to talk about that again one of my favorite okay. subjects cannot be yes. child's friend till they reach a certain age after okay. they become full grown adults by all means become their friend but in the early days children require more discipline more guidance mm. right and um being a friend is not enough it's mm. necessary but it's not enough be friendly don't yes. be a friend What's the difference yes okay uh coming back to the symptoms of uh, how you can look for anxiety in children mm-hmm. chronic fatigue if you find the child is tired all the time and if the medical diagnosis is not saying anything it could be anxiety okay uh getting into frequent trouble at school right complaint <laughs> in school this fellow is a trouble maker or even look remember this one is the hyper the people yeah. who create a lot of trouble and one is the quiet ones but sometimes right? some uh, kids have a lot of energy in them, themselves which they have not not able to spend somewhere you know they are a lot an- really yeah. very anxious that way so they do get yeah. hyper and what to find is the word trouble okay getting into trouble at school look teachers and other caregivers at school understand that there are some children with more energy right? right so when a report is coming from school that your child is a trouble maker that's the time you need to sit and take notice so teachers are trained they are educated they are they are not just going to come and tell you that your child has got extra energy they understand that right but if he's creating a ruckus if he has trouble then it could be a cause for underlying anxiety uh for those professionals who are listening in you might be wondering why i'm not going into the elderly space i'm not going there purposely that's going to open another pandora's box that's a topic for another day okay right um right. unexplained headaches mm. dear parents school guardians school counselors school nurses unexplained mm. headaches could be cause of anxiety in children mm. um irritability again can if i'm angry am i anxious same thing if your child is irritable could be anxiety mm. uh nervous habits like nail biting you know pulling off the hair uh avoidance behaviors like refusal to go to school mm-hmm. any kind of avoidance behavior i don't want to do my homework i don't want to submit my projects on time i don't want to go to the birthday party i don't want to go to school could be an underlying anxiety that needs addressing um chronic restlessness again chronic not natural some children have more energy they are yeah. going to be a little more rowdy but if the child is all the time restless if you can't get your child to be calm if the brake of the car is not working your parasympathetic nervous system again joining the dots for you what applies to adults 
most of it applies to children does it all not able to uh, mind if child not sit in one place for a long time does it also relate to that uh sometimes arti again lot of factors i don't want to get into this question now because okay. there could be a whole different uh, you know different things that we need to look at cannot mm-hmm. just take one symptom like that and say that oh it's because of this we will have to look at an entire uh, you know plethora of history behind that okay. so i'd rather not get there okay uh, if you permit me please yes. sure. um frequent nightmares if your child is having frequent nightmares mm-hmm. uh, that could be anxiety okay and um, if you find he's withdrawing if he's withdrawing from his friends if he's withdrawing from his social circles again could be anxiety unexplained stomach issues okay. once in a while everybody gets a bad stomach but if your yeah. child consistently has a bad stomach could be an underlying anxiety um concentration and focus problems very famous again and uh, sleep disturbances what applies to adults a lot of it applies to children Mm. you will find me reiterating and repeating the reason is i would like people to retain as much as they can through mm-hmm. this lecture so try okay. to and sort of through this discussion by yes. habit i said um, any kind so, of indeed you know i'm learning so much from you today i'll be information thank you thank you arti thank you arti now the hero of our talk this is the part i love the best okay. enabling right actually not not enabling that's a bad word in our dictionary mm-hmm. facilitating what can parents do okay so now i'm going to take a 30 second break and i i want some parents to just write in i'm a parent you know give me comments let me see how how many parents are listening that will give me a bit of a chance to give my vocal cords some rest arti you are free to go on with your talk i i just want a few parents to write in and say i'm a parent i'm a parent so i know there are parents yes. listening there or parents out there in the live just then i'm a parent over here so we know whom all we are going to address to listening yes my sister arti is there she's a parent i know so please do mention i am a uh, yeah, he takes have care that. of children a lot so i know that he's a you know he's like a guardian so look you can be a guardian you can be a parent kim from dubai is saying she's a parent and uh, okay. my uh, brother uh, amit has joined from bangalore amit thank you that's wonderful so now we have and uh, no, actually that may be amit or that may be shilpa but okay great we have four people who are a parent one one more let me start one more let me be greedy okay one well, more one more to know um mentioning that i am a parent segment now shilpa yeah that was shilpa so shilpa is a parent okay so fara has said she's a okay we got parent and even uh, pooja has said she's a parent again the women are writing in six women we are strong to go okay so please uh, make a note of these are some of the things you can do so first i want to say that there are three ways in which you can observe how the anxiety is you know coming out uh, in your uh, uh, children mm-hmm. the first is their body the body has a tendency to store a lot of anxiety okay so look for somatic symptoms all the symptoms i went through above a lot of them were body symptoms headaches gut health mm. sleep they, they were all body symptoms right so look for these body symptoms in your child the second way that you can know that your child is struggling is through his thoughts or his thinking patterns right so it's very important for you as a parent to know exactly what your child is thinking don't guess you should know so okay. that is the thinking pattern 
and the third way in which you know that your child is a third way or there are only two ways oh okay so there are only two ways one is a body and the emotion i think we exceeded but for the instagram uh, we it was a one hour session so maybe we exceeded the limit and that's how it got uh, disconnected some people are joining that there is this uh, very famous animated movie called kung fu panda yes and uh, there is a there is a ugwe there master ugwe the turtle and he says yes. there are no coincidences so maybe it's not a coincidence that the internet connection went maybe there's something we should not get anxious no i'm okay i'm totally okay kevin has joined in Look, Kevin. Thank you for joining. Things like these do happen, and we should be ready for it. Just accept it, however it is. We can always have another talk yes, when we get definitely. a chance. I think How? let's just because um, I'm sure with Ramadan timings over here, we have like kids um, like coming in quicker. So okay. yeah, I'm sure. Imams will be in a hurry to rush and pick up kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you suggest we do, Arti? Should we end it? Uh, you can um finish the topic we were discussing about kids. Yeah, and I will take another ten with... minutes. I will, uh, you know, kind of wrap it up quickly. I wanted yeah. to go into a bit more detail, but uh, we'll just uh, improvise. Yeah, we will just uh, do a little quick. that and maybe one or two questions that i saw i'll try to remember what i got from there there mm-hmm. was one question that was asked was is being over happy being called anxiety part of anxiety yes 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 that okay. yeah, you know it's a part of the anxiety i explained where you become hyper so when mm-hmm. you're overjoyed when you're over happy especially right. without a reason look right. um the design of the chemicals of the brain is mm-hmm. like the waves in the sea they mm. are supposed to move there is supposed to be an ebb and a flow you know like right. the sea comes out the waves are there and then the sea recedes but if you find that your emotional state is consistently very happy or very sad for a very long time for a short time being happy is what the whole world is after so whoever is happy continue remaining happy but if it's right. happening over a period of time consistently without a reason then you know mm-hmm. that it could be a restlessness which is showing in this very quickly i just uh, want to say that uh, these are the few things that parents can do again i'm just consisting the whole thing ideally i would have liked to spend about 20 minutes on this 20 mm-hmm. 25 minutes and i would have liked to take a lot of questions but let's keep that as a separate series okay um yes, one of the thing all want a part to do comment comment in i want a part two so we know that we want to have a, another session on anxiety with dr reema yeah, my daily dose of external validation i'm set <laughs> for today okay okay so um one of the things that parents need to do and i'll keep it very simple your role as a parent as a guardian is to provide a safe non judgmental non critical mm-hmm. listening environment for your child okay that's all you need to do very simple your child needs somebody to talk to without feeling judged without feeling criticized without feeling compared mm. i cannot stress this enough i go up to mommy and i tell mommy mommy today i wrote five pages in my notebook mommy looks at me and says five that neighbor told me that her son wrote ten pages you wrote only five finish <laughs> finish your child is never going to trust you again right to come back right, right. because you judged him you compared him 
trust is a very precious commodity in the world it is even more precious than your oil aarti it's even more precious than your oil trust among parent and child trust amongst employer and employee trust mm. amongst neighbors trust amongst the continents of the world the countries of the world so for a child trust is a very precious commodity and a sure shot way you can break your child's trust is by judging him comparing him ridiculing him ha five pages when i was your age i used to write 50 pages i i'm sure so many parents would relate to this and that. are doing I think this i work with children and parents and couples and adults day in and day out i'm saying all this very purposely i know they are listening and i'm saying it for their benefit hey you know i i'm sure so many people must have come across that so many parents who have hamane zaman mein itna likhte the tum to kuch le likhte ho you're not writing anything because it's become like an online learning so much is online you are typing out rather than writing so yes that comparison will always be there it should not be there what was my yes. solution my solution is you need to provide a listening space for your child look mm. so many children go to a therapist and they mm. talk to a therapist but they don't talk to their parent have you thought about why all that the therapist is doing is providing a non judgmental non critical non comparative non shameful we are not shaming mm. the client or the child if right. you can model that for your child i promise you your child will first come and talk to you because you are the parent there is a genetic connection there is an umbilical cord connection mm. you are the closest thing to your child why would your child want to not talk to you okay so yeah. i'm going to repeat this so that i want people to hear it don't compare don't judge don't shame don't ridicule and help your child to build trust Second and sometimes when they should yeah. go to their parents Sorry. they would react and like you would just shout you know like just angry on them rather than being patient and listening to them aarti somebody has leaked my notes to you i have to find a traitor in my team that was my next point be patient okay. when you listen to your child i can understand all of us are living in a very busy world where we have our own so many things to do so when the child is talking to us we just want the child to get to the point we just want the child to finish talking so we can go back to our you know many chores or chores not got that pronunciation right as yet be patient talking, so, yes be there's not patient. even a with the kid when you're talking many a times it happens like that too be patient remember the child's brain is much slower than yours okay their processing ability is slower give them time mm. be patient their mm. thinking their intellect is not as sophisticated as yours mm. you have seen so many years in your life you have so many experiences your child is trying to think things through this is my second point parents must spend time with their children to help them to think things through okay okay let me take mm. one example for example there is a child whose parents are going through a divorce and mm. he is at school and the parent who was supposed to pick him up did not come to pick him up that mm. child's mind is going to go into overdrive oh my god as it is my parents are going through a divorce now they've not come to pick me up have they abandoned me but the mm. real reason was the parent got stuck in a traffic jam mm. help your child to think this through my right. dear little top or my dear little teddy i was not able to come because i got stuck in a traffic jam but mm. i love you even more and i apologize to you for being late my intention was not to make you feel panicky right the words thank you sorry have to be floating around very freely in a family 
yesterday i had a couple session i was working with a couple who has a 9 year old daughter and they're having marital difficulties and this is exactly the homework exercise i gave them you have okay. to say sorry to each other a lot more frequently all the child is seeing is you fighting the child is not seeing you say sorry she has to see that too fighting is okay but she also has to see you saying sorry children will learn better in seeing what you're doing rather than you preaching them you know like do this do that yeah. children do as they see and not as they are told if you yes. tell a child don't smoke a cigarette but you're smoking away to glory in front of the child you're giving that, unconscious mission to the child that smoking is okay so maybe at that time the child won't smoke but once he becomes a little bigger he'll think oh my daddy used to smoke so i guess it's okay yeah nothing wrong okay yes the second thing i want you to do as i said is be patient the third mm. thing i said was that you have to help your child to think things through the fourth thing is the trust i mean i had mentioned it earlier i'm mentioning it again build trust the best way to build trust is and look when i say don't criticize it doesn't mean that you don't tell your child what is right from wrong the mm. language has to be different so you don't tell your child that you wrote only five pages you are a slow poke and you are a moron that's not what you tell your child what you tell your child is that i'm glad to see that you finished five pages right. um, you know slowly and steadily do you think we could together increase it to maybe five and a half pages next time I promise you I will sit with you and we'll do it together you know yes so in no way am i advocating that you don't point out the flaws mm. of your child i always say parents are the most concerned people on earth okay right you're always right. concerned and worried about your child that is in your genetics mm. you wake up worrying about your child and you go to bed worrying about your child you know most of the answers the right. only thing you need to do is you need to learn how to give those answers to them asta is commenting that's how i tell my child to you you learn look we are not born with this knowledge nobody taught us right so we are all there to learn True. so i am also not criticizing any of you guys let me make that clear i'm just telling you all that there is a way to do things differently uh one of the other things is there is no substitute for spending quality time with your child no substitute no substitute single sentence i'll repeat it 100 times if i need to no substitute you got to spend time with your child how you do it yes. i don't know that's up to you you're an intelligent human being you figure it out no right. substitute when we look at childhood trauma when children come to us and we analyze their case childhood neglect is the first mm. factor a mm. child will remember my mother was not available my father was absent sometimes there are genuine reasons the father needs to travel for work the mother needs to go out and work so whatever time you get let it be a gadget free unadulterated time now many time the child is on his gadget and you only have those 15 minutes what do you do i will tell you what to do first of all don't shout at the child from your room hey tommy hey what are you doing coming to my room don't do that tommy ain't coming tommy is on his gadget what you need to do is you need to get up you need to walk very gently into tommy's room not barge walk in right. take his permission sit down yes. with him and yes. come with an attitude of exploration come with an attitude of curiosity this new generation their brain is wired for the gadgets they are not going to give up the gadgets so easily so if you I have an expectation that when you go to your child he's going to put his gadget down forget about it he's yes. he's not doing it he's I not mean, doing it With my teenager also, I face the question. I knock at his door and like, can I enter in? <laughs> and good. then, like you know, from a gadget, you know, it's very difficult. Of course, he looks up, but then he like, okay, what next? Tell me fast. 
<laughs> they are also impatient right so anyway let me continue how to deal with dear tommy on the gadget so dear tommy is on the gadget and the mommy is walking in so the mommy takes permission uh hi hi tommy can i come in so tommy says hmm he doesn't even say a yes or no hmm you just hear that grunt then the dear mommy will go in then the mommy should tell tommy with an attitude of curiosity and exploration um so what are you looking at you know is it something interesting get mm. into the child's world your world is a very different world it's an old world it's an extinct world your world is not relevant for the child for the child it's a virtual but, reality world yeah so get to into the world yeah but the kids sometimes don't like it or when they are questioned into what they are doing you know ah uh, now that's a topic for another day <laughs> <laughs> yes they don't like it i understand but i'm just trying to take one example and just you know try to explain what are some of the things you can do just be curious yes. with your child don't be critically curious what are you watching on the phone not like that genuinely curious okay yeah. so try to do that try to get into your child's world he has his own private world going on remember yourself as a teenager you have so many secrets mm. we don't want him to tell us all his secrets we are not spies but we right. do want to understand what our child is going through so that if he's having any challenges we right. can assure him that we are there for him and where he's not able to find a solution we can help him to find a solution that's the reason that most of the parents have joined in the talk today it's the right. middle of the work day for so many people and yet i am so pleased to see that they're taking time out and they're joining this why because the parent wants to provide a solution to the child okay yeah. um some other quick i'll 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 go quickly um encouraging your child encourage your child instead of discouraging your child only five pages mm. encourage your child wow five pages let's do five and a half okay yeah. um then the next one is journaling big activity for adults and also for children journal with your child if you look okay. online there are a lot of these things available where you can do journaling as a family right look for okay. those tools they are available journal with your child okay, okay. um very important mm -hmm. your child has certain desires certain expectations when he talks to you about those expectations help him to make those expectations realistic okay mm. so i will share my example one of the expectations i had of myself as a student was i will come first every year oh okay, okay. that is unrealistic expectation because you can't come first every year classes are shuffled mm. right somebody else may come first so i remember one of my teachers actually sat down with me there was one year where i didn't come first and i came second and i was very disappointed okay so uh help your child to make his expectations realistic i'm just going to run through i don't want another okay. technical glitch i just like people to hear what i can um don't you don't avoid the things that your child is avoiding for example if your child is afraid of going to school mm. don't encourage him to not go to school or if your child is afraid of the dark don't mm. enable that and don't say it is okay to be afraid of the dark work with your child to find out why he is avoiding something and find a solution that's a very uh, important point because people always nowadays say it's okay not to be okay so yes Yes. That's very important yes. to put so, across. Look, I'm, I'm I'm not saying that your child needs to be a superhuman, but right. as an observant and a caring parent, you right. need to find out that if my child doesn't want to go and play with his friends, what is the mm. reason? And it is right. not okay for him to be in social withdrawal. He needs right. to learn how to socialize. Right. There is a there is a friend of mine. I have seen her. Uh, go down with her child every evening and and you know facilitate the play for the child and that's so mm. wonderful to watch you know 
so i think in conclusion what i'd like to say is we cannot eliminate anxiety it's a naturally occurring by product our mm-hmm. goal is to help ourselves to manage anxiety and to help our child to manage anxiety so that it's tolerable right. it's not the heat man look the air conditioner cannot eliminate the heat but the air conditioner right. helps us to at least manage the heat yes Can I we have a few comments coming in just as a goodbye? Yeah. You all are not there as a live yeah. audience. Otherwise, usually I have the mic passed around and I have my live audience talking for a bit. But I would just love to hear your comments. Any questions? Thank you, Kim, okay. from Dubai for being so participative. We, I'm sure all of us have gathered a lot of information from this session and it is a lot to take away and really thank you for the insights on such a wonderful topic okay we have a question she says kim uh, kanchi or kim says my kid hates to socialize with her friends but she likes to talk to adults okay quickly uh, kim i'll try to answer this quickly um try to find out what is the reason that your child does not want to socialize with the same age children usually um the reason is that the child may not be feeling competent enough or efficient enough or the child may not be finding the ways in which he or she can bond with the group so there is certainly an issue here look the thing with adults is they are very welcoming to children and the child doesn't have to struggle to be a part of the adult world but with the peers with the contemporaries there is a struggle so yes this is a real issue you might need to do a little bit of uh, you know research and reading on this but please do help your child on this one Any thank you uh, somebody has said nice topic so thank you Yes. Uh, have some feedback coming in from the audience did yes, they like yes, top would they like yes. more of such topics so kim has said thank you thank you kim for bringing up such a relevant point i'm sure you've answered a lot of parents uh, worried because this is a very real worry for many parents right even asta has mentioned such a good session any feedback will you want a part 2 of this also put it in the comments i'm in for part 2 and i'll rope reema in and fix a date for another one session okay so my uh, sister is saying the uh, very explained with very relatable situations thank you shilpa thank you so much thank you and someone has men- mentioned to yes i want part 2 Kim also surely want more. Looking forward to listening to you again. A wonderful feedback. Any further questions before we end? I'm surprised uh, we don't have too many questions. No, they were Actually. in the earlier. They were in the okay. earlier. Okay. And unfortunately, it ended up. I think we have addressed most of them. So. wrap up and thank you to each and every one who has joined in especially dr reema who has taken out so much time and helped give us so much valuable information i'm sure so many could relate and so much from here uh thank you arti for your initiative of let's talk let's really continue talking it's a pleasure for me also to connect with a large audience like this and uh, from my side i also want to thank my team who has helped me uh, creating the content and uh, you know being around me while this live session is going on i'm a bit of a technology dinosaur so you know thank you my team for helping me and thank you rp for being so Yo. patient with me it's absolutely been a pleasure having this session with you is looking forward to much more thank you thank you bye bye and have a good day to everyone we'll come back with more soon